Good morning, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm here in beautiful Arizona today. Terry and I have been enjoying some vacation time in one of our uh, favorite places, Arizona. And uh, we've been here for a couple of weeks. This last weekend, we had a delightful time at the Southwest Gospel Music Festival. Uh, joining there with a whole slew of our Southern Gospel friends, quartets and soloists. And they let me come and lead the audience in congregational singing. And, you know, that's one of my, my highlights. And so it just was a great weekend. And now we're here visiting with a friend in Tempe and go home in a couple of days. But it's just been a, a glorious time. The weather's been a little cool. It's kind of typical of Arizona this time of the year. And as you can tell, I'm outside. But, uh, but anyway, it's kind of... That kind of typical weather this time of the year, but we love it. We used to live in Arizona, so we know what January is like. We've had some beautifully warm days, sunshine, got to sit out in the sun a little bit, so it's just been a really, really great time. Now, I want to talk to you today on the subject of the climate lie, the climate lie. Now, you know, this, is, this has just been pervasive, not only here in this country, around the world. People talking about climate change. And yeah, you, weather does change. Uh, it goes up and down. I mean, we had a really... Uh, severe, a couple of snowstorms this winter already, moving through the north and northeast, and California is getting just inundated with water, and the Sierras are just jam-packed with snow, and, and uh, yeah, there's there's been floodings, there's been tornadoes, there's been a lot of things here, and and, uh, and again, just around the world, there's been a lot of stuff too, and, and just nature, it just, uh, it happens, and as long as we've had recorded weather, I mean, it just is here. Uh, but but this idea that the alarmists come along and say it's going to the world's going to end in 12 years, uh, 15 years by 2020 by 2050 if we don't have this climate situation solved we're all going to die we're just we're all going to burn up we're all going to freeze or something or the oceans are going to rise up or the uh, the Arctic uh, the Antarctic is going to going to melt and uh, and we're all going to drown. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You know, we need to see nature from a spiritual perspective. Just as we're seeing our physical lives this year, we've talked about this already. It's been a couple of weeks. We need to see everything about what's going on in our lives from a spiritual perspective. So we must see nature and the natural world in that way as well. Listen, I want to go back to Genesis chapter 8. God forms a covenant with Noah after the flood. Noah comes out of the ark, sacrifices to the Lord. God says to Noah, Here's my covenant. No, I will never destroy the world again with a flood. Never. And then he goes on to say this. As long as the earth remains, and we know who's in charge of how long the earth remains. Not the climate alarmist, not the scientists, not the naturalists, not the religionists, not the educationists, not the governments, not the kings and the queen. No, these people are not in charge of how long the earth remains. I know they've got all these ideas. God is in charge of how long the earth remains. And here's what he told Noah. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, night and day, these things will not cease. I just, I wish we could get the climate alarmists to read the Bible. But even if they did, they wouldn't understand it because you have to be spiritual to understand the spiritual truth of the Word of God. But here we are. And understand something about the climate alarmists. They're going to all gather in Davos here pretty soon, and it won't be, it really won't be about climate change. It won't, because they're all going to come in their jets and their yachts, and they're going to be <laughs> just spewing this exhaust into the atmosphere. They are the biggest users of the fossil fuel problem that they are seeking to solve. And they'll all get together there and they'll sit around their big campfire there and they'll sing Kumbaya and let's solve climate change. And the whole idea is to galvanize the world under one subject, under one subject, and get everybody to sing Kumbaya together so the elitists can run and rule the world, run your lives and my life. Look, it's even down to gas stoves, gas stoves. They want to come for your gas stoves as if we haven't had this, as this is something really new now that we're getting allergies and all kinds of things from gas stoves. We've had gas stoves for 200 years. And you would have thought by now that some researcher, some whatever, would have figured out gas stoves, the problem of all of our health. No, it hasn't happened. But now it is because climate change becomes the issue. So we have to grab a hold of everything we can to rob people of their natural freedoms, to, to steal away from people 
their their choices, their freedoms, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, all these kinds of things, the elitists of the world moving us towards a one world government, and they're going to use the natural world as a means of doing this. Understand something. What's going on in the natural world is not understood by the naturalist, the scientist. It's understood by the spiritualist, the people who know the word of God. Here's what the Apostle Paul writes to us in Romans chapter 8. That all of creation is groaning within itself. When God pronounced the curse upon Adam and Eve and Satan in the garden, said, Adam, the ground is cursed because of your sin. Satan, you will go on your belly. All the beasts of the field are cursed because of you. Eve is going to bear children in pain. The natural world would be cursed. And so there's an upheaval in the natural world. Every storm, every hurricane, it's all a result of man's sin. And Paul gives us a very clear understanding that this natural upheaval in nature will never be resolved until the redemption of the sons of men. All creation is groaning within itself, longing, the Bible says, longing for the redemption of the sons of men. There it is. Climate change? Yes. Is the world going to end the result? No, it is not. They've been spewing this stuff out forever. It's not. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to you from a spiritual perspective. I want you to get your spiritual minds in order here and don't get caught up in this stuff. Don't let these people lead you down a primrose path. It's a lie. Keep your focus on Jesus and your focus on the spiritual realm. Now understand something. It's going to get worse. Wicked men are going to wax worse and worse. And as evil wax worse and worse, so will the upheaval in nature. They are connected. Don't, don't forget this. From a biblical perspective, Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 21 that in the end there's going to be all this upheaval in nature as well as all of this, this, this negativity, this evil, this debauchery that's going to happen. The wicked, wicked men are going to get worse and worse and the natural world is going to throw up more and more and more and more as time goes on. It will be one of the great signs of the end. But here's the, here, here's, let me take you back to Romans 8. Creation is groaning within itself, longing for the redemption of the sons of men. Listen, there is coming a new heaven and a new earth. When all of this upheaval is going to be gone in nature because the sons of God will have been redeemed, and so will nature as well, as Jesus said in Revelation there at the end, I make all things new. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And on that new earth, the lion's going to lay down with the lamb. You mean we're still going to have animals? Yes. All creation is groaning within itself, longing for the redemption of the sons of men. Every lion that rends its prey, there's a groaning that's going on as a result of man's sin and the curse. It's all going to be done away with someday. There will be no more storms. There will be no more hurricanes, no more typhoons, no more tornadoes. No more floods, no more prey. All will be peace because the King of Kings and the King of Peace will rule and reign with us, his people, on planet Earth. That day is coming. Don't be deceived. Climate change, yes. But the process is going on right now. It's a lie. It's a lie. I want us to sing a great hymn. It's called I Sing the Mighty Power of God. The reason why I chose this hymn is because I love this hymn third verse. Listen to what it says. There's not a plant or flower below, but makes your glories known, and clouds arise and tempests blow by order from your throne. When you see the upheaval, just remember nature is cursed, that God's in charge, and he's working all things for his sovereign purposes, so don't be dismayed. Put your glad God glasses on See the world, yourself, your friends, your families, nature, everything that's going on. See it all from a spiritual perspective. And you, my friend, will live in rest. While the rest of the world is going to hell in a handbasket around you. And you'll be able to rescue some of them because they'll want the rest that you've got. God will use you to win some people of Jesus if you stand firm in the realm of spirit. God bless you today. Let's sing, I sing, the mighty power of God.